Super Monkey Ball on the GameCube ended up being very successful. As one of the most iconic and recognizable third-party titles on the console, Sega decided to capitalize on its success the following year by releasing Super Monkey Ball Jr. on the Game Boy Advance? I know I kind of teased that I was going to be talking about Super Monkey Ball 2 in the last video, but since this game came out first... Wait a minute! This came out AFTER Super Monkey Ball 2? That can't be right! It's fucking... Everyone thinks this game came out before, right? Everyone fucking thinks this came out before? Monkey... fucking Monkey Ball 2? Yeah? Sam. Yeah? I need to ask you something. What do you need to ask me? Do you think that Super Monkey Ball Jr. came out before or after Super Monkey Ball 2? Wouldn't it make sense if it came after? Yeah, right? Yeah. It would totally make sense if it came after. It came out before. Wait, really? Yeah. Oh. It's pretty fucked, isn't it? Or wait, did it come out? Yeah, it did come- wait. I'm so- wait. Wait, I was gonna, I I was gonna correct you and I was gonna say, Johnny, didn't- didn't it come out after Monkey Ball 2 and that was the funny did thing? Because it, just... it was the first game. Oh my god, you're right, I fucked up the entire bet. <laughs> Aiden, I need to ask you a very important question. Oh yeah? Do you think that Super Monkey Ball Jr. for the Game Boy Advance came out before or after Super Monkey Ball 2? Game, game Boy game Advance game is a bad console. No comment after that. <laughs> Shit. The whole thing. Okay. Now we need your signature so that we can use you. Yeah, that's going oh. in the video. You know what I would do for a Klondike bar? <laughs> <laughs> what would you do, Aiden? Oh, Super Monkey Ball, a good game. See? I, g I guess not. Whatever. I actually think it makes more sense to cover Super Monkey Ball Jr. before I cover the second game, regardless of release dates, because this game acts more as a footnote to the first game's legacy. It's good to be able to have a more direct comparison, since this game borrows heavily from that first title. Instead of being developed in-house by Amusement Vision, or any division of Sega, this one was developed by a company called Realism. Realism and published by THQ, which is always a real stamp of quality. When you boot up the game for the first time, it becomes immediately apparent that this is, in fact, a THQ production, having gone through the same rigorous quality testing standard that the company is famous for. The menu actually replicates the GameCube version pretty closely in terms of graphics and music, but that similarity ends... kind of? Once you actually start the game itself. Let's just say that this isn't exactly the ideal way to play Super Monkey Ball. Now, you might be wondering, Johnny, why do you think that Super Monkey Ball Jr. for the Game Boy Advance isn't the ideal way to play the game? If you have to ask, then you'll never know. This is actually one of the more technically ambitious games for the GBA. The console was technically capable of 3D, but most games didn't really take advantage of that because it looked like shit. So this game is somewhat of an oddity in the library. They made a crazy taxi one too, and that's all I'm gonna say about it. But ambition doesn't always equal quality, a realization that sets in the moment you move your left thumb to begin your adventure. You'll find, hey, I'm playing on a fucking Game Boy. There's no goddamn analog stick. You clearly have fantastic observational skills and apparently an anger problem. One of the key fundamental aspects of the GameCube games that make them work as well as they do is the sheer precision that the analog movement allows you. And while playing the game with an analog stick actually does feel pretty good, not gonna lie, the fact that you can't do it while playing on the go, how the game was intended to be played is a huge point against it. Even with the stick, it feels pretty imprecise at a lot of times, which I'll chalk up partially to the game not being programmed for analog movement, despite, of course, being a 3D game. Also, the only official means of playing the game with an analog stick would be the Game Boy Player, meaning you'd be playing Super Monkey Ball Jr. on the GameCube, a platform on which you could be playing Super Monkey Ball 1 and 2. So what's the point? There's a couple other slight oddities that keep it from feeling quite like the GameCube games, aside, of course, from the beautiful graphics. The camera doesn't quite work the same when falling, and the whole thing feels slower, although I do still have to give it props because it manages to keep a pretty consistent frame rate and it is very playable. That said, it still holds the game back by a significant margin. 
The GameCube games famously manage a consistent 60 FPS, and while that's obviously too much for a Game Boy Advance to handle, it still makes the game come across as very sluggish, something that's criminal for a franchise like this. So why would you make this? This sluggish frame rate, coupled with the awkward D-pad controls, turns stages that are similar to their console counterparts into something exponentially more difficult. Look at how easy this shortcut is on the GameCube compared to the Game Boy Advance. I consider myself something of a high-level monkey ball player, so I didn't think I was going to need continues just to get through the beginner stages. Several of which, might I add, are very similar to the console counterparts, which I can breeze through with little to no issue. But with a little extra effort, I pressed on and managed to make my way through beginner without too much trouble. Unfortunately, this game is lacking something else that the console version has, and that's a decent difficulty curve. Something that I praised about the original Super Monkey Ball in my video on it is how the game slowly eases you into more and more difficult stages, which helps to make things feel fair and highlights your improvement at the game one floor at a time. Monkey Ball Jr., on the other hand, does not fuck around when you get too advanced. I noticed a pretty big leap already on the second floor, which throws a lot of different types of hazards at you one after the other. Not much of an issue for someone who's been playing extensively, but by the time you hit Floor 9? Fucking advanced Floor 9? What bullshit. Part of what I love about this franchise as a whole is the level design. However difficult it may get, it is almost always fair. This floor has you move on to these ascending platforms. Pretty standard fare, not so bad, but at the very end of the level, you have to take a goddamn leap of faith. You can't see what's below you, and it seems that, no matter how much momentum I build up, it just will not happen. This, about halfway into the middle difficulty. This is borderline inexcusable, and really highlights how that special spark the console games have has not been brought over in terms of creative and intuitive level design. This is another area in which the low frame rate and imprecise control really hurts the game. This stage and a lot of others wouldn't feel like such bullshit if you didn't constantly feel like you were fighting against the engine itself. I won't say that all the level design is terrible, because it's not, there's some pretty good ones here. But most, if not all of them, are hindered as a result of running on this inferior engine. Levels that would have been memorable and fun in one of the console games are rendered as tedious and annoying here. Huh? Wait a second. If you hold A when you're controlling your monkey, you speed up, and if you hold B, you slow down? Oh! That's how you beat Advance Floor 9, you just have to be going fast enough. <laughs> Why don't they ever tell you this?! One of the few things about the original game that this game doesn't try to copy, but really should have, is the tutorial! When I'm playing Monkey Ball, the last thing on my mind is the goddamn face buttons. Do I have to rewrite the entire script now? If I were less lazy, maybe I would, but you know, un unfortunately the video's already almost done. But I will tell you my thoughts on the matter. My qualms with the lack of any indication that this feature is here aside, this is actually a really clever solution to the lack of analog, and it definitely helps to provide more precise movement. The frame rate really fights against the speed up on more complex levels, however, and it doesn't solve every problem. But I do have to commend the team at Realism for thinking of something like this. It's definitely a clever design decision. Given that this game tries to get as close as possible to the console experience as it can on a platform that's clearly not built for it, there are also approximations of several party games from the GameCube original. No Monkey Target, although given the hardware, that's probably a good thing. Monkey Fight is a good approximation, and it actually feels pretty at home on the GBA. The D-pad hurts the fun a little bit, though, and that, combined with a lack of fluidity compared to the console counterpart, makes it feel a decent bit harder than the source material. Also, you can't punch the camera at the end, so this port gets a 0 out of 10. Monkey Bowling also feels fairly at home on the GBA, but the already clunky physics are turned up a little bit more here. It feels like the weird power meter moves even faster, and that definitely doesn't help. Other than that though, it's very functional and pretty accurate to the GameCube version. Some of the animations are really funny to look at though. They try to replicate the victory animations from the original, and it's admirable, but so lo-fi and the pseudo 3D pins crumpling to the ground when you hit them is a thing of beauty. Monkey Golf continues the trend set by the first two minigames, and in fact may be the most true to the console version in terms of physics and overall feel. It is every bit as hellish on the Game Boy Advance as it is on GameCube. This is the one I find particularly impressive. The full 3D courses are all rendered at once, much like the main game, but the frame rate actually feels a little faster, probably because you're not exactly controlling it in real time like you would be tilting the stage. Or maybe it's that. Monkey Golf doesn't require you to tilt the stage. Hmm. Anyways, this one holds up well if you're into hating yourself. I mean, Monkey Golf. 
So a year after Super Monkey Ball Jr. came out, they actually ported the original game to the N-Gage? Yeah, the N-Gage. If you don't know what the N-Gage is, it's this weird smartphone handheld hybrid thing that Nokia released in the early 2000s. Pretty big flop, but weirdly there's a lot of big franchises on there. Although the N-Gage game is called Super Monkey Ball, I wanted to cover it in this video, because if you take one look at it, you can tell it's very similar to Junior. However, I don't have an N-Gage, so I'm gonna need somebody else to talk about this for me. Very few people have N-Gages, actually, but I've managed to track down two people who uploaded gameplay footage of this game in the past to provide a more comprehensive look and to help me talk about it. So, here to provide his thoughts on the game is Ninja Star Reviews, along with some gameplay footage from Elven Eid. Please go check out their channel channels in the description below. Take it away, boys! A lot of people put Monkey Ball Engage in a similar vein as Monkey Ball Jr., but they have less in common than you think, aside from both for the most part being portable adaptations of the first Super Monkey Ball game. But both adaptations carry elements of Super Monkey Ball 1 that the other doesn't. Starting off small, unlike Junior, almost every object in the game is fully rendered in 3D, including even the bananas. Engage also likes to be a lot more ambitious with the stages it puts over, including the cube stage from Expert and even the rolling red carpet from Master. This comes at the cost of the game's frame rate. This game drops a lot of frames during gameplay, which is something I haven't seen happen in Junior. Another interesting change in the Engage version is that it has the voice speech menu option like the original. It even uses some unused dialogue from the first Super Monkey Ball game. Both N-Gage and Junior use the same control scheme, consisting of D-pad movement and holding A for faster movement and B for slower movement, or 5 and 7 on the N-Gage. On the N-Gage, however, the controls feel significantly more loose than in Junior. For example, if you want to make a tight turn on N-Gage, rather than holding 5 to speed up then turn, it's actually better to start turning then hold 5, otherwise you'll turn way less. Moving any direction ever than forward will also seemingly keep you from gaining speed, which can feel really odd when playing. N-Gage's engine is also significantly more floaty when compared to Junior. In N-Gage, you are able to float across the sky as long as you have enough speed. In fact, you're even able to use the speed to go up over walls that you clearly weren't meant to go up. This is in contest to Junior, where you drop like a rock at any point that you're off the floor. You would think that the game being in portrait mode would be a big inconvenience, but actually I didn't mind it that much. Maybe Monkey Ball doesn't need that much peripheral vision, but this game didn't really have a screen crunch issue in my opinion. But the camera angle poses the problem on its own. The camera angle just isn't high enough for you to properly judge where you are on the floor. An odd issue with the game is the music. Now it's a port of Monkey Ball 1, right? Shouldn't it have the same music? Well yeah, you're right. Except it has almost no music from the game at all. In the entirety of challenge mode, the only music tracks available are the jungle island music, the main menu theme, and the bonus of music. The jungle song isn't even complete, it's just a small chunk that repeats the entire time, even in different level themes. Now most other engage games usually had no music, but in this case that gets worse because it's significantly more annoying than if there was no music at all. Speaking of level themes, there's also less of those. There was a pitifully low amount of level themes present in the actual game, to the point where both expert and unlockable master mode use the same electric background. This is also caused by the amount of stages present in the game. There is 10 for beginner, 15 for advanced, 20 for expert, and 5 for master, for a total of 50 stages, which is a pretty embarrassing amount of stages, even compared to games like Steppenwolf, which although lacking in stage count, still has 70 stages. Engage also tries to have a similar credit sequence to Junior, where rather than the fast paced platform jumping, you just roll to dodge some walls and occasionally grab bananas. Honestly, it's one of the most boring Monkey Ball credit sequences I've ever played. There just isn't enough to do to hide how repetitive it really is. So far, Engage is looking really bad right now. There is a couple things I think that Engage does better than Junior, however. I do like the level transition animation after each goal, and mimics Super Monkey Ball 1 surprisingly well. There is also, uh, what else is good about it? Oh, I love the box art. Believe it or not, I do believe the N-Gage is some of the best box art in the whole series. It's just a shame that's attached to such a bad game. There is one more major thing to talk about when it comes to Super Monkey Ball N-Gage, however, and it's the mini games. A common staple of each Super Monkey Ball game, even if the qualities have been inconsistent among the releases. As you'd imagine, the games in N-Gage differ from their junior counterparts. Aside from Monkey Fight, there are two other different mini games from Monkey Ball. Yes, I did say two. All the sports related minigames like Monkey Golf and Bowling are absent for Engage. Definitely not doing it any more favors. Getting into the actual minigames themselves, Monkey Fight, I really don't have that much to talk about. It's essentially the same game as Junior, except for worse flame rate and worse controls. You can also only fight in the grass arena. Getting into the more interesting games, Monkey Race. Considering that this was in Monkey Ball 1 and not Junior, it's a lot more ambitious of a minigame choice for Engage. You were able to adjust the lap count, turning items off, and every typical settings for this mode. Unfortunately for this game, there's only one stage to race on, which is just a basic oval and a grass theme. The basic shape of the track leads to it becoming extremely boring, which isn't helped by the extremely loose turning, which feels wrong. Any level of precision racing from the original has been completely lost in this version. You don't even need to worry about the items since you can easily overlap the CPU with relatively little effort. Overall, this one is not that enjoyable and you'll likely play it once to ignore it. Finally, the last minigame present is Monkey Target, which is actually a fan favorite game from Monkey Ball 1. So you'd expect that this version would be good, right? 
This mini game is actually the worst of the three, believe it or not. It actually retains the wind mechanic and the optional item wheel from the original. But this version lacks the water present and every target is just a square. Running down the ramp and swinging the fly feels fine enough what you expect for this version, but landing on the target itself is where the problem is. It doesn't matter how much you slow down or land earlier, most of the time you'll fall off the target. Even when it looks like you'll make it, you will somehow still fall off the edge. I honestly have no idea how they messed up this minigame so badly. Overall, Monkey Ball N-Gage was a mess. It tries to emulate elements of Junior while also pushing the N-Gage hardware. And as a result, it's a poorly running, worse game that makes Junior look great and makes the N-Gage look like trash. This game didn't even have multiplayer in any capacity, something that even Junior did. In conclusion, just skip this game unless you really want to try it or want a complete Monkey Ball collection, because the actual main game is only kinda good at best, while Junior is pretty consistently fun throughout. Maybe if they had actually spent the time thinking about how to adapt the gameplay of Super Monkey Ball into a spin-off built for the Game Boy Advance or the N-Gage instead of going to whatever lengths necessary to replicate the fucking lens flare, we would have ended up with a game that held up better over time. But hey, if you want some Monkey Ball action on the go and you don't have a DS, or 3DS, or Vita, or Switch, for a portable Monkey Ball, both of these games are passable. But early 2000s Monkey Ball has the potential to be far more than just passable. And next time we visit this franchise, you'll see how true that really is. Hey everyone, Johnny here. Thank you for watching my video about Super Monkey Ball Jr. Big shout out to Ninja Star Reviews for talking about the Monkey Ball N-Gage game, and for Elvanid for providing me footage. He provided me what I think is the first known footage of the Monkey Target minigame from the N-Gage version, so that's really super cool of him. Both of them have been really nice, really supportive, and really helpful for getting this project done. You can check out their channels in the description, and I highly recommend it. Ninja Star Reviews has a review on the first Monkey Ball game that I'll link, as well as some particularly impressive speedruns of Junior on his speedrun channel. Those are also in the description. And Elvani, as I'd already mentioned, has some footage of the N-Gage Monkey Ball game, as well as numerous other N-Gage games that you guys might find interesting. Also of note, today a collab video that I did with my friend Eddie from Earthcore Studios came out. It's about Pokemon the first movie. I will put a link to that up. I highly recommend you go check that out. Eddie is fantastic. It was really a privilege getting it to work on that with him. And I think we're probably going to collaborate more in the future, be it on his channel or on this channel. So, yeah. Ah, oh, well, I'm at it. Also, thanks to my friend Will for helping me edit this video, as well as editing the last one. He and I have been working on editing a lot of stuff for this channel collaboratively, so he, he is a big help. Anyways, thank you guys for sticking around. This has been Johnny, and I will see you next month with something other than Monkey Ball, although I will be continuing with Monkey Ball 2 next time I look at the franchise. See you guys next video. Peace.